All right, guys. So I have made a video about this IP controller for PTZ cameras. I'll put a link down below. It's just a review video, but I've been actually getting some questions on how to set it up. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we set it up. The first thing you need to make sure you get all the IP addresses right for your camera and for the controller if something goes wrong with the with the uh, ip addresses uh you may have issues connecting your cameras <clears throat> one thing that i do recommend because this controller has poe okay so i do recommend you use an ethernet switch with poe that can actually power the camera and power the ip controller as well so that's how we have everything connected so we basically have this controller connected to the switch and the switch is providing power as well and we have two ptz cameras um, connected to the same ethernet switch as well and they're being powered by poe or power over ethernet for you to connect the cameras obviously the first thing you need to know the IP address of your camera. So when you buy it, the first time you purchase it, you're going to have uh, a remote control that comes with it. So you can use that remote control and uh, press, I think it's star 64 or um, pound 64. You should see it on the user guide that comes with your camera. Once you have that, it's going, so basically your camera is going to display. So you're going to need to have your camera connected to a monitor or a TV using either HDMI or uh, SDI, depending on which one you have. And you're going to see the IP address of the camera. Now you can log into your computer and actually access your you know your camera's ip address and actually get to change it because you're gonna need to change it at some point but what you need to do is you're gonna go to the computer and you're gonna type in your camera's ip address you should get to the page that shows you uh you know just like shows you all the camera controls and uh, most cameras they are going to ask you a password and uh, a username so go ahead and actually use admin so most cameras will have like the, the admin as username and admin as password so once you enter the password you should be able to actually log into uh, the camera's menu okay so once you get there uh, what you need to do you have two most important settings and those are uh, if you scroll down to <clears throat> Uh, OMVIF settings. So you want to make sure the OMVIF is on, is turned on. Okay. So that's your kind of like your protocol. Uh, and because the, this controller uses OMVIF as well. So you're going to make sure the OMVIF is turned on and you go to IP configuration type and make it manual instead of dynamic. Okay. So once you do that, go ahead and submit and actually restart your camera. So now once your camera is restarted, you should have a new uh, whatever IP address that is there. Uh, what we need to do is we're going to go to menu. OK, and um, the first very, very important step, OK, is you're going to go to network set. OK and make sure these are my settings okay so make sure your ip address is on static okay so don't make it dhcp i mean it could work dhcp could work but if you make it static it means it's gonna stay that way uh, no matter what happens if you unplug it and plug it again uh it's gonna stay the same if you move the controller to a different network Let's say if you do events and do mobile setups and stuff like that, then you're going to have to redo the whole thing. The most important thing is your IP address usually is going to be some numbers like one, like you can see mine is 192.0.0.70. So for my camera should have exactly the same thing should be 192.0.0.70. 
then it could be 71 or 72. In fact, my camera is 71. That's camera one. Camera two is 72. So those numbers has to have to be really uh, the same except the two or three last numbers. And then you can, you're going to have your mask gateway. Usually you should have these numbers automatically set for you. You know, even the DNS and everything. Okay. So you should have them set for you and you shouldn't have to change anything there. Okay. And then uh, go down here and then click uh, or hit save. Okay. Says modified su uh, successfully. So once you have your camera's IP address and everything is already set, uh, you go here on the top where it says search for devices. Okay. And then go to just hit search. Okay. So come here and then hit search. So as you can see, I have my two cameras actually are showing. Okay, so I have camera one and camera two. And as you can see, the same IP addresses, 192.0.0.71 and 192.0.0.72, the two cameras that are connected to the uh, switch. And then what you do, once you see them, you can just click any of the camera. You can select any of the two cameras or you can select all of them. And then what you do, you're gonna go down here and then click, um, you know, select add, and then the camera should be added, okay? But I'm not gonna do it because I already have the camera already added, so no need to do it again, okay? That's pretty much how you, you do it. And um, let's just go ahead and exit. So once you have it added, I can go to cam. So if I hit cam and then I hit one and then enter, I should be able to connect to camera one. Now, if I go, if I had another camera added, I can go to cam and then go to two and enter. Then I'm going to access uh, camera number two. And you can see the IP address and everything uh, showing here. So that's pretty much how you connect your cameras. And once you have everything connected, you should be able to control. Now I can go ahead, you know, as you can see, I, uh, I can zoom in, uh, sorry, zoom out. Uh, I can zoom in, let me change the zoom speed to eight. So you guys will see, you can zoom, it's kind of fast, you know. But if I put the zoom speed to number one, you can see it's, it's slower. It's more smooth, right? It's smoother. So this is the kind of zoom that you would use in a production environment, you know, because you don't want a fast zoom kind of thing. So yeah, so that's, yeah. And then you got the, the pen and tilt speed. So I can put the pen and tilt uh, on one. So if I pan and tilt, you know, this is something that uh, you can actually use in production. So on one, you know, if you want to show this motion live, this is perfect. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have questions, let me know uh, down below uh, in the comment section. I know that are people having issues with this controller, but it's an amazing controller. It's just, there is no much information out there on how to set it up and everything. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.